Yesterday? Um, yesterday I, uh, I spent the day commuting, running errands, checking codes, handing out flyers. At work, I spent the whole day at work. But yesterday night, I spent the whole night designing, well, landscapes and cityscapes and interiors and decor and strange technologies. And writing, I spent the night writing music strange music and characters and, and dialogue and stories and, and really living and you know what I'm gonna do it again tonight and every My name is Cincinnatus, but all you need to know about me is that I am average. <laughs> or that I was average. I've changed. I've been changed. I have made an extraordinary discovery and it's changed me. Sounds crazy to say, but this discovery will change the world and everyone in that's, that's why I have to tell the world. But I have no means other, other than to lift my voice and tell you, you will be among the first people in the world to be changed by my discovery. Changed and transformed into surrealist architects and, and surrealist designers. And surreal musicians, too. And surreal chefs of surreal dishes. Into realists. Real originators. Real inventors. Explorers. Discoverers. Geniuses. Genius artists and scientists and oracles and prophets all and all by my discovery because accidentally by chance or by fate I have discovered how to induce fever dreaming in healthy people. <laughs> Let me explain myself. <laughs> dreaming. 
dreaming is one of the most important methods of creative inspiration that now dreaming is the most powerful method of creative inspiration that we have bar none and i can say that factually historically just in the 20th century we know that dreams have inspired the work of Picasso and Dolly, the Beatles, Pink Floyd, Fellini, Kurosawa, Kubrick, Lovecraft, Joyce, Kafka, and many others, many other names synonymous with artistic movements and whole genres of art, whole media that they originated, inspired by their dreams. And you may have known all that. Some people know that dreams have inspired some of the most inspired and influential art in history. But what few people know is that dreaming is a general creative method of that it is as important to mathematicians and realists as artists and surrealists. Dream inspiration is equally important to every field of human endeavor and responsible for most of the genius and geniuses dreams we know that in just the 20th century dreams have inspired the work of Einstein yes Einstein's theory of special relativity, the basis of modern 20th century physics, was inspired in a dream. A dream about ghosts. And Bohr's model of the quantum structure of the atom. A discovery that led directly to the nuclear reactor and the nuclear bomb and this age of the atom was also inspired by a dream. Lowy's discovery of nervous transmission, how nervous systems and brains work, also inspired by a dream. Watson and Crick's double helical structure of the DNA, the basis of all modern and future freaky genetics, a dream. And, and, lest we forget the modern psychology of the great dream analysts Freud and Jung was inspired by their dreams. I could go on through names of scientists, 
thence to technologists, industrialists, spiritualists that have given their names to whole fields, subjects, industries, schools, and religions. But I think, I think you get the point. You can see that even from this short and incomplete list of a few 20th century artists and scientists, that a few 19th century people in taking their dreams into the waking world created the 20th century created our world created us and it's happened before many times it's happened at the beginning of each era century epoch and age of mankind each brought forth by dreams and dreams all right all right all right ready dreaming is the most powerful method of creativity Granted, given, but, but, if dreaming is the most powerful, it's also the least reliable. Think about it. On waking, on waking, what we even can remember about our dreams is usually fragmentary notional and usually usually even that is forgotten in the next moment the forgetting of dreams is is so prevalent that a significant portion of the population believes that they never dream that they cannot dream that sleep is more or less a dead quarter of their life practice for the big sleep, I guess. Death. All right. Given the frequency with which we forget even the most extraordinary dreams, we must conclude. Are those dreams I listed? Those extraordinary artistic and scientific dreams I listed represent a survival a survival of one in a thousand dreams of the greatest importance to humanity lost and gone it's such a terrible loss imagine Imagine if those dreams hadn't been lost. We wouldn't be living in the world of the 20th century. We would be living in the world of 30th century art and science. Can you imagine? 30th century music and sculpture and architecture. city planning, food production, and energy production, ecology, if you get that one fixed, politics, that one too, medicine, 30th century medicine, we'd have, we'd have a cure for every disease by now, including death. 30th century psychopathology and 
in spirituality, we have a cure for every ailment of the mind and the spirit too. And 30th century space exploration, we would be talking on Pluto right now. Pluto, the outer limit, if, if the method of dreaming more reliable than it is or has been or has been I'm here to tell you in the world that's exactly what I've done or less on accident. I have made the most powerful method of creativity into the most dependable, the most reliable method of genius. My fever dreaming method will induce hours of surreal but lifelike dreams in even the most resolute non-dreamers. And my method is safe, safe to use every night. And my method is simple simple and easy all it consists of all it consists of is elevated sleeping temperature that's all it is and that's all it ever was. Turns out the thing that induces fever dreaming in people sick with the flu is in the sickness. It's the slightly elevated body temperature that is part of your own immune response. Slightly elevated temperature. It's the reason why we dream more memorably when we have someone in our bed with us. It's the reason why we dream most frequently in the morning after the sun is up and our nighttime bedclothes have become too hot for us. In that last hour of morning dreaming, our slightly elevated temperature is causing us to dream intensely. And now, now that you know, now that I've told you, you can use my discovery to induce fever dreams and genius in this safe and simple technique. Go on an extra blanket, shrug on an extra sweater, turn that nighttime thermostat up a few degrees and you will have the most amazing dreams you've ever had in your life every night starting tonight and if you use my method if you will be joining 
a small but elite and grow number of people employing the method fever drinks. Many of these people are average people, like I had been, plain people, people of no apparent potential. The people of whom society expects so little or nothing at all. Most of these people at first are only interested in those high adventures. Fever dreams provide them with every night. That and the fantasy the magic and the mystery, the meaning, oh, the personal insights, and the genius inspirations, the wish fulfillment, and the predictions fever dreams provide them with every night. You could have all those things tonight. But, with time and under this sustained surrealistic influence, these people are gradually accumulating dreams in their memories, in their imaginations, and in their waking thoughts. These people are gradually changing under the influence of their own dreams. Changing. And in some cases, suddenly transforming. As I have been transformed, so too you will be changed. Mark, you will see suddenly awaken from among the so-called average sleepwalking sectors of society, great artists of every medium, technologists and engineers, genius scientists of every subject, oracles of the gods, great spiritual teachers, and the prophets of the new religions, suddenly awake and arise from the dead quarter of society, the popular mainstream. And in such numbers, and such continuous consistency, as would constitute the great awakening into the golden age of mankind. I cannot see. And I cannot say with any specificity what this new world will be like. Ten centuries advanced from our own. A thousand. I cannot imagine it. For you precisely because it is beyond conscious imagining. But I can say this. The new world, the golden age of mankind will be adventure and fantastical 
and mysterious and mystical and magical, intense and meaningful, inspired like our shared dream of 